Okay, this is my before watching this video. I'm leaning towards Reaper. Is it called Reaper? Just because people told me that it plays like Demon Hunter. Red Mage, because it looked kind of cool with the like going into melee, going out of melee, interweaving, like having barely any downtime because of interweaving instant cast spells. Monk. Monk looked kind of cool with the combos and stuff as well. But people said it gets reworked often. Um, however, it's in a good spot right now. So that's like my three right now that I'm looking at. So I'll be interested to see how how and if my opinion changes watching this, right? Man, why did I pick all the classes that are locked? Okay, which ones are unlocked? Like, what about uh, Dark Knight? I feel like that one's going to be locked, isn't it? Man, it's so crazy. Like, I miss this whenever it's about, like, a new game. Just being completely overwhelmed with information and just, like, just fucking just going in and just like storming through the gates and stuff. Yeah, right. We're going to we're going to have a little watch of this boys and girls. But I guess balancing is a little bit easier class, in this. Or which one to level next in Final Fantasy 14 online? Mm -hmm. Well, you're in the right place. Well, as a certified content completionist, I'll tell you how each of the 19 classes feels to play and how their core mechanics work at max level, guaranteed. So Keep in far. mind that while playing Final Fantasy 14, every class is considered viable That's at like that even the most challenging contents, so you should always pick one based on how it they looks, were doing the clock thing. feels, and plays. There are five different main roles within this game, and each has its own unique purpose in a combat setting. The role that engages the fight first, and the one that we'll be talking about first, are the tanks. You tanks. already know what comes with this role. It's tanks. The classic. You just talk shit and get hit by the boss until either its health bar or yours hits zero. Aww. Thankfully, there's tons of tools to prolong an untimely death through shields, book, heals, boy. or reducing incoming damage, also known as mitigating. Despite every tank performing mm -hmm. the same function, each big Hulk beefy boy hit. has its own big beefy boy way of getting the job done. Let's go! Paladin. With sword and shield in hand, the paladin is the lover of all things holy and no heresy. Unless it's participating in some Sorry. cat girl debauchery. Wiping any sinning under the rug, the paladin is a stalwart shield and amazing ally for Classic both paladin class and its party members. They have plenty of options for reducing incoming damage or just straight up taking attacks for your teammates. Throughout the Paladin's hmm. kit, there's a lot of self-healing in their abilities and in their damage combos. Kind of similar to This helps you stay topped off when the healer decided not to show up today. <laughs> a Paladin's damage rotation revolves around them using a physical phase and then transferring into a magic phase that effectively you. turns you into and a ranged spellcaster for the duration. <sighs> Rinse and repeat this until a boss is no longer tickling your health bar. Managing you, a Remick. damage over time attack, or DOT, also exists within the Paladin's rotation to keep their numbers tick, tick, ticking. In the name of the tanks, the healers, and the dead DPS, the Paladin will always be there to lend you a helping hand. Ah, oh, shucks. I mean, Warrior has a 200 as well. What's going on inside someone's head? There's 200 axe. Blade Storm! That was not an F. Armed with a big <laughs> fucking great axe, warriors are trained to release their inner beast and then decimate anything that so much Leave as twitches this. on the battlefield. They go fast, they go hard, yeah. they go raw. They go wild. Instead of using baby protection like shields, warriors use their whole ass health bars as their damage reduction. Did you so much as touch my health bar? No, you didn't. Suddenly low health? It's blood well, decay, here. basically. You can afford to play reactively with your health bar due to the insane healing powers of your abilities. Oh, that's kind of cool, warrior actually. Day keeps I kind of like Warrior. Far away. In addition to being a one-man army, the Warrior also possesses a very simple damage rotation that's easy for anyone to learn. Perfect for me. gives you access to more powerful abilities, and once every minute you go absolutely apeshit, unleashing your inner beast, and you can use these abilities for free. You also Ooh, unlock the secrets nice. to the ever so coveted monkey spin. <laughs> you quite literally have to try and kill yourself to die with this class. That sounds really good for me, to be honest. Oh boy. Here we go. I got your picture. I'm coming with you. Oh, okay. Maria, 
sentinels that take up the great sword and quite literally channel the darkness from inside of them. Dark knights like protect the, uh, those like who society video forgets. On here. They must remain in control of their raging emotions or they'll be pushed over the edge, becoming the darkness. Now, what makes a dark knight quirky and not like the other tanks is that they can shield damage and then deal it they back. They have cool animations, However, though. they need to use this shield proactively since they lack self-heal options that other tanks do. This is why learning fights are key to time your damage right. so you won't end up at the edge So warrior is more noob-friendly. Learning the rotation is quite similar to that of warriors. Your rotation unlocks access to more powerful abilities, and every minute you can go berserk to cast them for free. Where they differ is that the Dark Knight has a cutting edge burst combo that rivals even some DPS classes. While maintaining a consistent cool. damage increase, you get to let the world know why you deserve to be paying attention <laughs> to for buffs from your party members. You even get to summon a stand assisting in your frenzy of abilities. No matter how Wait, cool is it like a shadow clone? Field, never let a Dark Knight on the ox. Listen to this bop. They're pretty oh, underground. No. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> this is a good video, right? Wielding a big honking gun blade, gun breakers can't stop, won't stop tanking until they or the boss drops first. They're the tank to challenge an eldritch beast to an arm wrestle before cranking 90s on its bitch ass. Fueled by a diet consisting of black coffee, white monster, or clinically dangerous white levels monster, of baby. gun breakers are extreme tanking. Drip You're gonna breaker. need this extreme energy for all the extreme combos you'll have to pull off. A gun breaker's base rotation stores charges that you can unleash to execute high damage combos. The optimal time to expend these charges is during your burst phase. You have two modes as gun breaker. You're either bursting or you're tanking. When you're bursting, hmm. pray to God so the boss off -tank, doesn't hit I guess. hard because either your healer has your back or your back will be in a casket. Pressing mitigations during back this shots. time span can be difficult due to your hands playing Osu in an MMO. Despite being well, distracted from the damage department, this job certainly holds its own in the tanking aisle. Gunbreakers have access to kind of cool uh, fantasy there. on short cooldowns to keep their caffeine-fueled rage benders going until the sun comes up. They can also share these with teammates to keep them healthy. Shoot yourself in the head. This is the Can't take most more energy, and they will definitely ask where your retirement home is if you're above the age of 25. Oh dear, I'm 30, boys. Oh no. This role should pretty much make sense too. Healer, the one who heals. The your one job who heals. is to keep the party's health bar above zero. Or don't, I'm not no. Healing does carry an immense responsibility in this game, but the learning curve isn't Can't as play it. as you may think. Healers have the simplest DPS kits out of any role, so you can focus on keeping Does up it put your health down to one? In case someone no? does end up dropping, every healer has access to a resurrection that can bring a party member back from the dead. There are two different types of healers to look at. Pure healers fill your health bar nice and easily, and Mythic shield healers help shields. prepare your health bars for damage via shields and mitigations. Yo, Navi. Yes, sir. Starting next week. Unless I get the itch too much and bring it forward. Using a cane that harnesses elements from the earth to defend others, white mages are the purest of pure healers. If they see you have any missing health from your health bar, they'll yeah. find a way to fill That's it up. A... White mages possess a large variety of potent heal and regeneration healer. spells to keep the party alive. The specialty of this class I is the simplicity mage. in how it's it Daisy! If you see a we don't hate Daisy! Number, just press any button just on white them mage. and they'll probably <laughs> be alright. However, looks can be deceiving because the simple white mage has a. Who's that frog looking geezer? He looks cool. Where's his cool hat? Receive the option to cast a free single <laughs> Is he on my team? We heal. Oh no, that's a boss. That looks like a bad guy. Attack, dealing an insane amount of damage. What did you say? All right. If you ever we love white mage. All right, guys. Chat. Go on, big it up. We need to undo our wrongs. We love right mage. Frog is redacted. Okay. Nice. Good save. Yeah. Yep. 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 Stare. <laughs> You're a manic healer sitting in the corner. <laughs> Face cigar. They simply want your health bar to go down so their damage can go up. When you're playing white mage, you're basically playing God with your team's health bars. 
weren't wrong about the god complex, were they? <laughs> it's just kind of okay, I guess. Armed with an arcane grimoire, scholars have proved that the pen is mightier than the sword, and they have the tactics to prove it. The first shield healer on this list, this job has many tools to preemptively shield and mitigate incoming damage for the party. Assisting in their scholarly shielding, scholar. they're able to summon a fairy to deal out additional scholar. health. If a party member is low, the fairy can that give them both. It also has the potential to pump out massive healing bonuses and shields within its radius. The trick here is that all of these spells Suck. affect the area around your fairy, so if you leave her out in the middle of Africa, your party members will be wondering where the hell their health bars went. Oh dear. Okay, that's enough of you. Let's get back to the bookworm. The scholar she the uses lily? a gauge of three charges that allows them to deal more damage or provide extra protections to the team. You that replenish cool, this gauge every minute or thing. by eating your fairy for a short time. With these charges, you'll need to calculate <laughs> whether it's worth to smack the boss or smack down some heals. Each time yep, you yep. use a charge, it increases your fairy's suck -a meter for a potent <laughs> regen on a single target. Even though he was laughing as he said that situation, one. Be careful not to run out of stacks prematurely, because the scholar is unable to heal up a party to full as efficiently as pure healers can. Hmm. I made a calculated decision. Yeah, that's kind of like Man, this priest. Man, I bad at math. Guided by the stars and the using the trusty planisphere, Astrologen is a pure healer that makes sure your health bar it's is Yugi. always safe. Provided Mercury isn't in retrograde. This job has weaker straight up heals than the White Mage, but offers more regenerations and delayed healing. This is a pure Being healer. Being able to predict the future is, is a it? core part of the Astrologen's gameplay. Much of their delayed healing is placing an ability down, letting your teammates get hit, and then healing them from a large portion of the damage dealt. Or you can just try to manifest that their health bars will go down slowly <laughs> so that they don't all die. The way that an astrologian stands out from oh, the, the crowd, card weaving one, yeah. pick me healer, is their card system. Drawing a card from their deck, astrologians either get the random option to buff a select melee or ranged party member. This is a great option for increasing the damage of your best performing players, assuming they aren't giving you Scorpio or Taurus Rising vibes. Additionally, the more unique cards an astrologian draws, the more this benefits one quite they hard receive. To play. For example, if all three previously drawn cards are different, they receive increased mana regeneration, reduced cast times, and increased damage. Now, right. as if one card system wasn't enough, Astrologians also have another card system that draws either free damage oh or free Oh my god, heal. this is confusing. Managing all of your cards requires quick decisions, much like finding out how to avoid an unlucky horoscope. Don't worry though, the planets have aligned favorably this week, and you will find the cat girl you deserve. Ooh, even me? Oh yeah, here we go. Guys, we're all gonna find our cat girls. As you said, we deserve them. Raining down lasers using their Nuliths, the Sage is here by the power of friendship to blast away any enemies that may hurt their party. As the newer this shield looks healer of the cool. bunch, the sage oh, it's will a laser one. Yeah, yeah. are coming with flashy animations. Let's go. On top of looking fly as fuck, the sage has the highest personal DPS out of any healer. Yeah. Like damage? Like damage. But wait, there's more. The sage gets to deal lots of damage and they get to heal for free. That's right, for free. All you have to do is slap this little thing on a party member and just for killing the boss, you get to heal your teammate. Wow, what a deal. Sage what a deal! Responsible for any raging party members as a result of you not healing them. Along with passive <laughs> healing, <laughs> this the video is quite well extremely done. Extremely strong shields and mitigation tools to help with upcoming damage that the boss may throw your way. Combining both damaging and shielding together, sages are able to augment their abilities oh, no. to produce different effects. I might this become funny the little button changes your standard damage <laughs> button into a damage over time, and it also changes a standard heal into a heal with a shield. Much like White Mage, Sage receives free heals and mitigations via a charge system. Is White Mage kind of like Holy seconds. Priest in Wild? They can send the heals over to a single person or the entire Just party like list if they like, so choose. I press heal, and if any of your friends are in trouble, you can fly right to their side and be the Amber Lamps they need, not the one they deserve. Milady. Hello again. 
you've made it pretty damn far. I'll keep it brief. If you're enjoying the video, consider leaving lie. a like or giving a sub. Okay. I have a goal on making the best Final Fantasy XIV videos this next year, and I want you to come along for the ride. I think if this guy's really videos are really it, good so far. With a friend who you've been video. trying to get to play for months, or a streamer so that they can have a haha -ha funny or two. Hi, chat. Hope you're having a good day. Thank you for your That's time. That's me. And without further ado, ha -ha funny. Let's get right onto the melee DPS. Thank oh, you for your time. Hi, chat. And without further ado, Let's get right onto the melee DPS. Hi. Now that we've gone through the tanks and healers, oh, it's what time cool to guy. go to the damage dealers. And damn, do melee DPS bring the heat. Jeez. Hugging right up to the boss's ass is their comfort zone. This is easily the most technical role, with each class needing to occasionally hit positions on either the rear or the flank of the boss for maximum damage. Oh, you get more Being damage so based on position. That is cool. But every melee has a quick way of maneuvering around the battlefield to adjust when things crash and burn. That's also melee cool. Melee is a fast-paced role, and every class has its own way of getting in close and doling out damage. Right. This is one of my picks. Looks awesome, to be honest. Using their bare fists to fight the dangers of the world, the monk isn't afraid to get in close and start beating away. In a fantasy world where heroes have options to blast things with magic or stab things with swords, the monk just looked down and said, eh, yeah, you got enough dusters. Monk's damage rotation is done by shifting through stances in a set order. Break it's a very scene. fluid rotation that allows you to swap between different damage combos as long as you activate the next stance. These stances are shifting by lightning fast, since monks have the shortest delay between their casts of any other class. And that's hmm. gotta be the best way to describe monk. Speed. You're Speed. punching hard, you're Power. punching fast. Amentum. You're juggling the most amount of personal and party buffs of any melee job. Your critical hits build stacks that allow you to uppercut baddies. You don't have a leap back, so you must run uh, away from uh, your problems that ability instead. Is cool. It can be difficult, it can be punishing, but step back and take time to reflect upon your actions. Why monk? Monk. Monkey? Monkey? Monk. Me. Me this monk. has a very high skill ceiling upon reaching max level, but feels extremely rewarding to play when learned. Yeah, imagine Leveling if you mess up, you screwed. will teach you how to go from grasshopper to grandmaster. Eventually, other jobs may feel slow since they don't quite compare to the speed of the monk train. Yeah, imagine going from monk to something else. It's really hard. Woohoo! Descending Dragoon. from the sky to plunge their lance deep into the hearts of dragons, dragoons make for the most amazing airborne assailants. Easier. Did no. I mention this That's job fucking way to look flies? At it. This job fucking flies. Or they just jump <laughs> really high. Eh, basically the same thing at this point. Dragoons are best known for using their jumps to deal damage, close gaps, Ooh. and even create gaps between their enemies. Ooh, that looks kind of demon hunter. Not only own the skies, they also own party buffs by increasing everybody's critical hit rate for a short time. They also have a tether that tells another DPS, you're special, and you both get to deal more damage. Oh yeah. Taking a look at the Dragoon's damage my rotation, waifu. there are two very long combos that you'll cycle through, but they loop together nicely, so you always know where to put your fingers next. Oh yeah. Totally That's about pretty that cool, actually. Point, huh? Well, basically these guys don't like P.I. Dragons. Oh no. So much that they become the projectile and snipe them out of the sky. Taking inspiration from their sworn enemies, Dragoons throw out dragon-looking things every now and then. Upon throwing out two of these dragon-looking things, you become imbued by a dragon's power and can activate draconic magics and unlock the mother of all jumps. Whoa! <laughs> nice. Ninja. He did some really good, like, um, intros and effects and stuff. Sneaking around at the speed of sound and using kunais to silence any saboteurs, ninjas are just about as ninja as ninjas get. They sneak, slice, and fucking dice anything that gets in their way. I can Believe stealth. It. Ninjas have a very versatile kit when it comes to dealing damage. 
they have a standard damage rotation where they need to maintain a buff that keeps attacks oh, coming no. in quickly. Where you can begin Didn't to forge Reaper. your own ninja way is through casting a short series of hand signs that activate many different jutsus. These jutsus serve a variety of purposes. Wait, what was that? That activate many different jutsus. These jutsus serve. Rabbit of shame purposes. if you mess up. Some oh no, they're gonna resistance. know. <laughs> Some grant you access to personal damage buffs, and one is completely useless. Don't worry though, almost all of them will be used at some point during your mission. Slice shit, don't You are able to free cast these jutsus in between your it's rotations, in -game. so you don't need to worry about <laughs> messing that up. During your standard rotation, you build up a resource that you can expend upon a strong attack or a shadow clone jutsu that will mimic your next few moves. Ninjas live up to their class identity as they can quickly slide from melee to ranged and then back again with a combination of their jutsus, a distance control blink, That's pretty cool. and letting you become the Jidori that you've always wanted to be. The decision making needed for jutsus and movement options can take time to figure out. They truly are ninjas. Arc, you'll be the main protagonist your party needs. UNF, what's up? Hello, hello. We're choosing job. Or getting closer to. Why is this one actually a banger though? Training themselves in the way of the katana. You're gonna play Lala, right? <sighs> Chat. Are we playing Lala Fell? Cause I kinda want to. Cause I kinda want to. <laughs> no match on my dead corpse. <laughs> Why does everyone hate them? They're so cute. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Who do you people leave? Oh no. <laughs> not if you want to explore the clubs. Wait, are they banned? Do the doorman not let Lala's in? I mean, they are they actually kids? Or are they just like uh short people? Master race. It's just a bit weird, isn't it? <laughs> Lala cursed. Short and evil. Short and evil. <laughs> Dude, babies, of course. I did tune into Neff's stream and she was, di yeah, literally diaper babies. She was in a club and she was like, yeah, yeah, we're having a club night. And then she was in a, like, there was four Lala Fells dancing in nappies on a dance floor. And they were just like whipping out the moves and stuff. And I was like, I'm not sure how I feel about this. My diaper won me 40 mil gil. Concern. Concern. Yeah. Hmm. Very concern. <laughs> We're going to continue. Get your, get your s'mores. Get your s'mores out. All right. Samurai. Samurai. Die by the blade or die by the blade. They only care about their blades and no one else. <laughs> no, Darren. <laughs> Samurai are what we call selfish DPS in Final Fantasy XIV <laughs> Online, since they bring no. I got a little bit hot now. Except for their. I got a little bit hot. Fat, <laughs> juicy damage. Ah, the burden of only being wanted for your gigantic hits and enormous crits. Woe is me. Oh since no. At the end of the day, my gigantic the katana, damage. Samurai is a class that is heavily reliant on personal performance. Is this a starting to class? Your thousand mile journey towards excellence. You have three separate combos that you perform during your standard rotation. Upon completing Why combos, you have the option to cast special moves in the form of a oh, damage time or a legit moving freight truck. Cast enough of these special moves and you'll release a flurry of blows on your enemy. As you continually move through your combos, you will build up a resource to expend on extra stabs and slashes. Rinse and repeat That's until so good, you sort sheath. After you learn the rotation well enough, you'll realize Everyone it's really else the top the DPS charts. Ooh. Once you get the this one's the top DPS. Ooh. Hmm. Well then. We got our decision. <laughs> Once you get into samurai, samurai. you get into samurai. Every samurai oh, will look sweaty. Me... It just depends if they're spending five sweaty. minutes in the sauna with Fiona the boys or on the treadmill at your local Planet Fitness. So, so this job is rust. Depending on how many gallons you sweat. <laughs> Reaper. All right, here we go, boys. This is a right, contender. Have to do another emo song. All right, here we go. Okay, fine.
What a banger. Slashing, slicing, and swinging their scythes around, Reapers are here to give Dark Knights a Size. run for their money. Reapers were originally humble farmers before they got invaded by magic users. Being muggles, they were kind of fucked to defend themselves. So, muggles. as a last resort, a they Harry said Potter screw thing. it and signed packs with Voidborn demons. Yo, that's cool. Reapers give themselves up to the demons on the battlefield, letting them devour the souls they crave. And that's lore, baby. Oh, oh shit! good enough for you. Reapers have a very fluid fighting style, swinging their scythes and letting their void avatar partially possess them. Starting with a standard damage rotation, when you hit enough slices, you can summon your persona to swing for you, making your next ability empowered. Oh! By casting enough empowered abilities, you enter a burst phase, allowing you to attack faster for oh. a short period, and then ending it off with a bang. Reapers also give teammates ending a pretty wide damage buff, but this is just a slight trick. You gain access to a high damage nuke that gets stronger for every ability that an ally casts during its buff period. In case the situation starts to look bad, Reapers can open a void portal that allows you to slip away and slip back. It's a rather That's simple cool. job to get the hang of, meaning you can start hacking and slashing right out the door. Just make sure you don't get too drunk off the power, then the demon may take over and your pact will become void. <laughs> Alright, Reaper. I won't lie, Reaper looks pretty cool. That's definitely a front runner for me for sure. So my other front runner was Red Mage. Thing is, if I play Reaper, I have to play other stuff up to seventy, right? So I probably pick like out of the melee, probably like Lancer or Warrior Marauder. Away from the boss, is it fun? Have you guys DPS played it? Or casters harness magic to deal large amounts of damage from a distance. Even though they possess range, casters still need to be mindful of where they're positioned due to cast times that are necessary for firing off abilities. Sitting still Yo, is a fair trade-off for the man? amount of damage that these magical men can do, and each caster has their own way of slinging spells. Magical men. Black Mage. Let's hear his take on Black Mage. Every melee is fun. Good to know. <laughs> the only melee you can play. Because of fun or, like, difficulty, yeah. Using a funny little blasting stick, the that Black stuff Mage is cool. arcane powers from their surroundings to cast spells of terrifying destruction. Is it time to blow shit hey, up? Decadence. Time to blow shit up. Thanks for popping in. Black Mages oh, love King. blowing stuff up, producing some of the well. highest numbers in the game. However, there is a catch to this. You Hello. need to stand completely still. Yeah, you heard <laughs> me. You just sit there and hurl spells. That plan's gonna work until the boss remotely looks in your direction and sends an AOE flying your Well, that sounds triggering. Black mages use long cast timers what the hell is he fighting? Stationary for the majority of their gameplay. While standing still is strangely hard, the Black Mages yes, damage Link's rotation that is, awesome. is not. It's so black simple. Why, why don't other games do that? Where they deal most of their damage. While blasting away is a good time, good times don't last forever. Eventually, Sag. you run out of mana Too and you swap to an ice phase to replenish that mana back to full. Once you're topped off, you can start firing away again. During your time playing Black Mage, you sometimes get to summon this funny looking circle. Never leave this circle. Oh, is this Rune of Power? Your Black Mage zone. Oh, uh, <laughs> all right, but Black faster, Mage, I'm out. Allowing for big time damage. I'm out. If push does come to shove, you can zip to an ally and then zip right back to your circle at any time. Being lazy is what a Black Mage Oh, uh, fuck that. They just removed it from WoW. I was so attention. happy. <laughs> Whether you're doing the most DPS or dying to every boss mechanic. Get fucked. Basically wrong. Oh man. <laughs> oh shit. Giga Chad. Summoner. Wait, is this machinist? The summoner harnesses summoner, formulas yeah. from their little cookbook of calamity causing creatures. To Giga manifest Chads. arcane entities of untold godly power. Jeez. Oh, and uh, this little guy. Garby! Garby! There's a Garbuncle. I don't really need to tell you too much about this class. Its name is Summoner. <laughs> Look at the Lalafell! I don't really need to tell you too much about this class. It's All right, I will admit, they look a little bit out of place. But I think that's so funny, though. Honestly. <laughs> I don't really need to tell you too much about this class. Its name is Summoner, and, well, 
It summons things. Summons in things. Both identity and rotation. The summoner just makes They're in sense. the right place. <laughs> there are five things that you will consistently cycle through during your damage rotation. There Look at are that dragon. Stone powerful summons. A dragon that just nukes the living hell out of anything you attack. And a phoenix that nukes things, but also helps to heal your team. In between each of those keystones, I guess there are cooldowns, right, to summon those really powerful from, ones. That range from a super hard hitting phase to a hard hitting with instant casts to the lightest and fastest casts of the bunch. It's a great starter class right. since there are very few cast time in the class's kit. The summons you end up placing down are amazing to look at, but look at can that. take up quite a bit of the screen. Extra thick. <laughs> There's an option to change this. But everyone knows that the bigger your summons are, the yeah, more damage they deal. That's true. True and factually correct. The times your summons accidentally kill people, summoners have a battle resurrection to bring back distracted teammates. So I can kill my own summoners teammates. Keep things nice Briefing. And simple, so anyone can have fun actually, causing strangle of things with your little Carby. Is he always up? All right, red mage. This is one I'm looking at. Drip mage. Yeah. In one hand, a rapier, and the other, a magic crystal, the red mage gets the best of both worlds by combining magical mastery with melee combat mage. To <laughs> style on every other class. The best oh, no. way to describe a red mage's play style is being very versatile. They have a team wide mitigation that also increases the amount of healing granted to everyone, a strong single target heal that can be applied to themselves or an ally and a battle raise that can be casted multiple times within a very short period. Red mages can single-handedly save entire runs by resurrecting both That is kind of cool though. Seconds. Like to be able to be the team is player. All thanks to their dual cast system. To put it simply, whenever a red mage sits still and casts a spell, they remove the cast Like time saving the pool. Spell. That sounds like me. This during your damage rotation, being a team player, not really caring too much about like while trying to keep them as equal as possible. Like I care about my damage but I prefer to kill the boss, you know? So if I have to choose one or the other, I usually will do the team play move. So it kind of kind of suits me, I guess. Let me just go back for a sec because I talked over it. Their dual cast system. To put it simply, whenever a red mage sits still and casts a spell, they remove the cast time of their next spell. You'll be using this during your damage rotation, consisting of balancing out two different resources while trying to keep them as equal as possible. When you reach enough of both resources, you can expend them on parlaying the boss, performing a melee combo, followed by some extremely flashy finishers. With sound effects like these... Ooh, your that combo won't be cool. the only thing that's finishing. While Red Mage <laughs> does need to sit still to cast uh... spells as part of their dual cast system, they have strong <laughs> movement options with their melee combo, and optional abilities to keep themselves outside What's LB3, of the reach. By the way, they are also the only caster to have both a consistent dash in and dash out ability to use against the boss. Just be careful on the way out if you want to keep your health. Ernie, up thank you for the follow. <laughs> physical ranged. Last but oh, limit break. not least are the physical ah. range DPS. Thematically, they excel at providing sustained damage to a target during combat and providing support for their party members. The trade-off of that freedom and facilitation is that they have the lowest cap of any DPS role. Remaining as one of the most accessible roles, every physical range DPS has their way to slay from far away. Some of the gun is cool. That's the machinist, right? Bard. Ooh, that's a cool demon. Very repetitive, you only look at yourself and, and do the same thing. Afar, bards are here to right. play a song and have their teammates sing along. Wait, That's how nobody the hell are supposed to play <laughs> a song if they just use a bow? What? I'm scarred from my days playing WoW where I can literally not trust anybody in any group that I do any content with and I have to do it all myself and I constantly say, if only I could just play with five me's, everything would be so simple. So maybe Red Mage is my thing. Technically, they use a lyre and a recorder sometimes. A recorder. I'm just happy to beat you. On that note, bards shift through the finds red mage. <laughs> step up their teammates or alter their gameplay in some way. In each different ballad, the bard can get random procs to gain access to a powerful stacking ability, spam one of their specific cooldowns, 
or attack more frequently. Whenever the bard That's gets a cool, enough like, rocks, they can unleash a powerful arrow thing? that damages Dragon? everything it passes through. On top of watching for all that RNG, bards also need to maintain two different damage over time abilities on the boss for maximum damage. As much as a bard wants to oh, deal plus. damage, they still need to support their teammates. They have the ability to provide extra healing and Songs. to remove common debuffs from themselves or a party member. This class also has unique access to the perform feature, which allows for the playing of different instruments. It's the only part of the kit that actively doesn't help your teammates at all. Oh, so wait, you can only play instruments as a bard, but anyone can just spec, like you can just chain, change role to a bard, play some instruments and change back, right? Yeah, okay. So anyone can play music. Young Felipe, never been cause on another he say she say. Look as I'm a bigger can you see my B day. Every day they do, I, Leno. I do not eat cake and I do not see hate. Stink mina, my Jimmy. Oh shit, flamethrower. Trusty pistol, shotgun, drill launcher, pack of dynamite, drill launcher, thrower, chainsaw, whole ass anchor, thermal detonator, and Geneva Convention violator. What the machinist hell? Has the freedom to kill things in lots of different ways. This rootin' tootin' gun totin' badassery of a class is the selfish physical range DPS class, only bringing their raw firearm power to the party. Shit. They have a simple damage rotation that cycles through different rounds, where they are free to use their heavy hitting Ooh, abilities cool. wherever they're needed. Machinists build up a resource, and when their gun is heated enough, they can bust it down machinist style to quickly unleash a burst of rounds for the next few seconds. Each burst fired reduces Pretty the cool. cooldown of other abilities, allowing you to spam them as well. It roughly looks like you're having a seizure with all the <laughs> buttons you're going to be pressing. Add in a stick of dynamite that deals yeah, with... Yeah, I imagine there's a lot of uh, APM on this one. Get fired at it. Machinists are known for their absurd amounts of burst damage. Every time you complete a combo, you build up a battery, and when it's charged enough, you can call out a mech real steel style Holy that shit. beats the shit out of whatever you're attacking. That is cool. Ain't she the cutest? Everything that's a part of its kit Sheila. has impact, and you can feel the damage numbers coming if you're pumping. Machinist is definitely the class where you'll be getting the biggest bang for your buck. Quite literally. Oh, yeah. All right, Machinist was way cooler seeing it in this video than uh, the other video. I was like a bit just like, oh, what was that? Like, gun gets hot? Okay, I, I guess. But this was cool. Like, showed all the different weapons and stuff. Starts at 30. Maybe I go this one. Maybe I level as this one as machinist. Yeah, dancer also looked kind of cool. So I'm a bit intrigued on this one. Visually coolest rotation. Yeah, I imagine it's like fireworks going off. <laughs> Caramel dancing. with flourishing yet deadly chalk rooms dancers are here to allure all spectators Chakrams. and slice all enemies that dare interrupt their show at the beginning of every instance a dancer looks around and chooses someone to be their dance partner mm -hmm. the dancer then buffs that partner <laughs> Look at the by giving extra damage upon completing a number of dance moves normally you'd want to give this to your best performing dps member since they'll make the most use out of it alternatively yeah. you can attach it to your significant other or the person hey. that you think looks in the party it's flirting without saying you're flirting. Dancers nice. don't just believe that it takes two to tango, as they have a party-wide damage buff that they must dance to complete, and a heal provided they cha-cha real smooth. I think it's kind of cool, though. Rotation is pretty kind of cool roll. I probably wouldn't main it, RNG. but... It won't make or break your damage, but it'll keep your eyes busy. Dancers start off by cycling through two abilities. There's a possibility they'll unlock a more powerful version of the previous two. Upon using those empowered abilities, there's another chance that they'll gain extra damaging skills. So take a chance to get out there and begin showing everyone your moves. If you want the spotlight for your suave dancing or support abilities, Dancer is your first step into stardom. Mm. Whew. That was a lot of classes, huh? That was a lot of classes. This brings you one step closer to finding out which job you want to level next. Yes, it did. Thank you. Help made this video possible. Thank you, CN. And thank you for watching all the way through. Thank you, Just chat. Remember to have fun and go play Final Fantasy. Sayonara. Good video. Good video. If anyone wants this video, I will link it in chat. If you got friends that need to watch it, it was a good video. I'm gonna sub to this guy. That was awesome. So, what are now my thoughts after watching that? 
Reaper looked cooler than uh, I thought. Um, let's let's go through. So Paladin looked pretty like for me a bit like eh, bread and butter tank class I guess right. Warrior sounded kind of cool. I quite like the idea of Warrior as a tank. Dark Knight. Um, I'd probably say for me like sounded like second to Warrior. Gunbreaker. The shoot yourself in the head thing sounded cool, but I don't know if the rest of it was for me particularly. This is on first glance, obviously, right? Scholar, uh, sorry, white mage seemed. I kind of like the god complex thing. I won't lie, yeah. You know, I, I can see where Daisy Choose is coming from there. Scholar, was that the one um, with the cards? No, that's uh, the shieldy one, right? And then the astrologer is the card. And then. Yeah, I mean, all of the, out of the healers, I think the sage looked the coolest for me personally. And then melee DPS. Yeah, monk sounded cool. I like I liked that he said it was really fast and like low global cooldowns. So kind of like I guess highest APM just because you're moving quicker than most others. Also, the combos sound pretty cool. Dragoon I thought would be like a nice chill one to just play when you. Just want to kind of like have your gameplay be like the secondary or something for a session or, you know, or if you want to. Uh, it's probably a really good streamer one because you're just like pressing a couple buttons. It seemed fairly simple. Uh, and then you want to like reach out or something, right? <laughs> um, does it have Death Knight? Kind of, yeah. It had like, so Warrior was kind of like Blood Death Knight, but Dark Knight was kind of like uh, a mix. Like it was kind of like Death Knight also. I'd say like definitely would be a cross between the two or something. Oh, Dragon is getting a rework, really. It's good for MSQ law. Yeah, that was kind of like my thought as well. Like maybe level as a Dragoon and then switch because it seemed kind of like chill. So I could focus on story and chatting to you guys and whatnot. Or is bloody amazing in dungeons you could literally solo. Really? Wow. Okay. Crafting gathering of their own classes. Oh yeah, so like professions and stuff then. Maybe that's for another day to look into professions. Did look at the job action trailer for Endwalker. Is that the expansion that hasn't come out yet? All healers are god complex. <laughs> yeah, Dark Knight I'd say is like kinda like one to one Death Knight, right? Yeah, you don't have druids in this game actually. I'm quite surprised they haven't done like a shapeshifter. Maybe they'll do that in the next one. Because uh it's Fairly common to have like a shape shifting class, right? You know, in like RPGs. So sage, so monk, yeah, pretty cool. I thought dragoon uh, sounded kind of chill, to be honest. Probably wouldn't be something that I would like main at max, but definitely something that I could see myself leveling up with for sure. Um, ninja didn't didn't click for me personally. Um, I don't know. I may, maybe he sold it. Like as a quite underwhelming in this video, it might have been like a little bit biased, I guess. But he said like one of their abilities didn't do anything, and I think you guys said it was getting reworked or something as well. So, um, personally, just didn't really do it for me. Just like nothing in that package really sold it to me. Samurai seemed okay to be honest, um, but also fairly like simple. And but then I did say it was like usually top DPS, so. You know, there's that. And then Reaper just seemed really cool. And then what I was thinking about when we were watching the Reaper part was um I was actually thinking oh, before they I was thinking about the um Let me just let it play and be muted. Uh, I was thinking like back to I played Lost Ark or I tried playing Lost Ark a little bit, and I played like a class that seemed kind of similar to Reaper in that one as well, where you kind of like had this demon within you and you were like punch and it would like punch like demon arms out and shit. And then you could like turn into like this empowered demon after you did a bunch of combos and stuff. I thought that was pretty cool. I don't know if any of you guys played Lost Ark, but it seemed kind of similar ish to that one as well. Crafting has rotations. <laughs> so Reaper's super simple, is it? Yeah. Samurai simpler as Reaper. Okay. Um, so right, we did Reaper. Reaper looked cool, to be honest. I thought it looked really cool actually. Black Mage didn't really sell it to me, especially when he talked about Rune of Power. That was like a instant turn off. 
I don't know if I was turned on, but I got turned off. So Black Mage, probably not for me. Uh, Summoner looked really cool. Pretty cool, actually. Um, yeah, Summoner seemed kind of cool. Having big demons doing more damage seems cool as well. So, like, your specials, that's, like, your limit breaks, I imagine. It's, like, the big dragon dude. Yeah, Summoner seemed kind of cool. Red Mage seems like I kind of click with that one. Um, as I said, trauma from WoW. That's part of my identity. Like, team player class. Kind of cool. Don't know if I would, like, main it, I guess, but you guys said I can't play it at the start anyway. Um, Bard didn't really do it for me personally. Didn't, yeah. Seemed okay, I guess. I guess, I guess, but personally wasn't clicking for me too much. I think out of the range DPS, I'd probably go Machinist. Um, and then like, you know, you could play Dancer just like on and off just for a little bit of fun, I reckon. That that's kinda like my verdict. Machinist looked really cool. Like this video made Machinist look way cooler than uh I thought it was. Yeah, so I reckon probably I will level up as either the warrior or the dragoon. And I will probably switch to either the monk the reaper or the red mage or the machinist so i really haven't got very uh close to deciding 